Hey, Zane Pusilowski down at KSU Mechatronics Lab. I think it's Q118. Uh, this is where you were supposed to be doing your lab, and this would be a great intro that we can use for semesters and years to come. So first off, I want to make sure you guys are all on our Discord channel. we got a Discord channel for Mechatronics. We really need you out there. We need you active. There's some really great channels out there. There's places to get your resume reviewed, to help people with career advice, uh, looking for jobs, internships, all those kind of things. Uh, I think every single class uh, has a chat um, that most of us professors can't get into, so that's probably a good thing. And then uh, what I'd really like uh, your help on is getting everyone active and helping one another and looking for ways that we can help make this a better place. All right, so to give you a quick tour, I'm down in Q118. I'm on the back side back here where you've probably never walked. Uh, we have a nice board here that's set up, and I think it was set up from Festo, which is one of the pneumatic suppliers that's out there. Um, looking at the bench, it's from Festo. Uh, there's quite a few other suppliers of pneumatics. Uh, Festo, Bemba, Parker Hannafin, Siemens. Um, those are just some that come to mind real quick. Um, encourage you greatly to check out their sites. Uh, look for their online manuals. Uh, there's a lot of great information that's out there to help you if you're trying to design a pneumatic circuit or a pneumatic control system or something like a pick and place or something simple that might be one of your first jobs when you finish up here at KSU. Um, a great person to find when you first start your job, especially if you're at a car plant or a manufacturing plant, is who's the motion industries rep. Uh, he's a rep that can get you to the suppliers of pneumatics, controls, hydraulics, electrical. The Allied Electronics rep is a great guy to get a hold of. Um, make sure you know them. Make sure they're taking you to lunch. Um, at one of my previous co-op jobs, that was one of the things we used to do every day, was call around and see who was offering the best lunch for us because we bought a whole lot of equipment and a lot of controls and uh, cylinders and hydraulic actions and basically uh, assembly plant type equipment from those people. So. Learn your motion industries rep, let them take you to lunch, talk to them, get an idea of who and what they are, and they'll, they're there to help you. You can throw to them, hey, I've got this problem, what can you supply, and then they can go do some of the homework for you. Okay, going from there, uh, Wikipedia is a fantastic place to go to get information on pneumatics. There's a lot of great diagrams, explanations of single acting versus double acting cylinders, all those things are out there. Please, please, please take a minute, stop, Pause the video. I know I look incredible. I know we're having a great time here. Uh, I know you're enjoying my droning on as I continue and work through this lab for you. Go to Wikipedia, look up pneumatics, look up pneumatic cylinders. Take your time. Look through the diagrams, look through stuff. And what I really want you to ask yourself as you're looking on Wikipedia, as you're looking on these uh, manufacturer sites, ask yourself, what would I do with this? What could I use this for? How does this help me in the real world? So don't just think about school and getting through this lab and getting your grade. Think about how can I make something really cool that does something important in the world. Maybe it makes a car, maybe it makes a robot, maybe it makes uh, 3D prints a mask that we can use in the massive pandemic that's going on right now. Um, all those things are something to think about. Okay, my next thing I'd like to do here as we go forward is I wanna introduce you to some of the pieces of equipment. Uh, we have a big board that's back here, uh, it's extrusion and a lot of the components that we have are set up to go onto the board. So they clip in, so to speak, and you can move them around and do things with them. You may not have a setup like this unless you have a test bed or something. Uh, it's at your job or at your lab, wherever you're working. Um, so I just wanted to show you some of the components. The first one is the important one for pneumatics. And what is that? Think about it for a second. In anything that we're doing pneumatics, what's the one thing we gotta have? we got to have a power supply, right? So we need air supply. And in most shops, you'll have what's called shop air. And I'd like you to take a minute and look up real quick on Google what's the normal range for shop air. Uh, in my days, it was about 80 to 90 PSI. Uh, nowadays, it may be 100, 110. It's really important to know what the shop air is and the place that you're putting in your piece of equipment uh, because that helps you determine cylinder forces, speeds, and all those kind of things. Uh, generally, if you're designing for about 90, maybe 100 PSI, you're in a pretty good range. You can usually get that to work. Now, the first piece or first component, and it's super far away, but you can look them up online, especially if you're on the Wikipedia page, it's a regulator, right? So air will come into the regulator and give us a supply. Now, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I'm basically the only person in the building, I think, right now. So 
for some reason, the cylinders, or excuse me, the, uh, the air supply, the uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, the uh, Uh, the air supply. The air supply is turned off. The compressors. The air compressors are turned off. I don't know where the heck they are. I tried to get in a couple of rooms to get them turned on for you guys so we could do some things. Uh, I think I've got a backup supply of air where I can set up. But for now, we have zero PSI. You can look on the gauge. Uh, this is really fun because usually the kids tell me it's got one PSI. Well, that's one bar. Make sure you're looking at the gauge. If I could take this off of here, I would show it to you a little closer. Uh, in any of these regulators, you've got a couple things that can be combined with them. A lot of times you'll see a filter regulator, so you're trying to filter your air before it gets into your circuit. And then a lot of times you'll also see an oil, oiler. So I want you to look those up, look up the filter regulator options. Um, Master Car or Granger is a good place just to get some images, or just go to Google Images and look up pneumatic filter regulators. You'll see a couple of different options. You'll see the nice big regulator valves on top so you can set your air at your particular place. So for instance, shop air might be at 110 PSI, and you might want 90 for your particular pick and place or whatever that you're doing, so you just turn it down and get it set for whatever you're trying to do. You can read your gauge to get it, you're all set. This guy's got a nice little uh, thing on the bottom, and then we've got a valve for supply. So always look at your valve. If it's going across your stream, it's usually closed, and if it's going the other direction, it's usually letting air through. In this case, as you see, I got no air because I have no supply, even though the valve is open, nothing's going on. Now in this case, we're bringing it to a manifold and putting it in here so we can bring out a whole bunch of different things instead of going into a direct set. So you'll see that a lot of times when you use it. Set yourself up a little manifold and then you can supply air to it and bring out everything that you need for the different components. All right, let's go into some of the pieces. Uh, the first one we have are cylinders and these are our movers, things that do stuff, right? So as you can not probably very plainly see, this is a cylinder, right? We've got an end effector, which this might be smashing something or pushing something or knocking something out of the way. We've got the connection, which you might bolt down, weld down, whatever you do, however you do it. It's clamped in and set up so that the cylinder can act. This is the cylinder. The black component is just a holder that was made to put it on the wall. Now in any of these catalogs, and I encourage you to take a look through them, you can get all kinds of end effectors, connectors, clamps, setups. Uh, I think that's all I got in here. All right, now what kind of cylinder is this? Is this a single acting or a double acting cylinder? Take a look at it, think about it. We got one good dead giveaway. I've only got air that can go on one side. So is that a single acting or a double acting? Well, if you're still not sure, one way to check, pull it out. If it springs back, it's probably a single acting cylinder, right? So I've got air that'll go on one side to supply and push the rod of the cylinder out when it goes out. And then I remove the air and vent it out of whatever valve I have in, then I spring back. Cool, single acting cylinder. Which makes this one almost impossible to figure out. Is this a single acting or a double acting cylinder? Obviously, it is double acting, right? So if I pull it out, it stays there. Why does it stay there? Because I'm not supplying air into the back side to push the piston back and bring it back in. So double acting cylinder, single acting cylinder. Why might I want to use one over the other? Well, let's think about that for a second. What could I do with this guy that I can't do with this guy? Well, I can run fewer airlines, right? So it's cheaper and easier. And I might just want to smash a button and come back. And I might never want this particular component to stay out. Maybe it's a exterior of a guard or something that, that I need to get back out of the way if it's not in use. Something that comes out and does something and then I need it back out of the way so I don't hurt people. And that's a big part of this. You want to keep people safe, right? So there's our single acting cylinder. Now I got a double acting. What might I want to do with that, right? Well, I might want to control something all the way through. Maybe I'm controlling a cutter or a component or a pusher or something. I'm trying to regulate or know exactly where something is. Maybe I'm making some kind of meter or something that puts out a particular amount of liquid or something. I want to control it and know exactly where it is. Now, the thing is in pneumatics, I'm never really going to know exactly where it is without some kind of 
measure or some kind of thing to know exactly where I'm at, but I can get pretty close, at least knowing about where it is by turning my valve on and off very precisely. Right, so we got single and double acting. Let's see what else we got here. Control valves. Here's some of the control valves. For some reason, this one has a Band-Aid or some cool tape on it. Sometimes you'll see that, sometimes you won't. Here's a couple of valves. Now, how do I figure out what the valve is? Well, if it's new and the shop and all the dirt and grime hadn't gotten on it, sometimes you'll actually be able to see what the valve does. So there's all the actions and there's all the information. I also have that much smaller on the top side up here, which you can't see. And then in most cases, I can look up the part number. Why don't you look that part number up for a Festo valve online and you'll be able to see exactly what it does. You can probably pull up the tech sheet or whatever it is you need on it. Now let's look at it for a minute. What do we got going on on the valve? So we've got the control or the solenoid on it that forces the valve to open, close, or whatever I need to do. And then I've got my various connections coming in or out. One I might supply, one I might pull control out of, right? And then what, what are these little things right here? Can we guess what those are? So if I look on my valve, I may be able to figure out what they are. And if you really rewind it a hundred times and tried to zoom in and you got the part number off of this sucker, most of the time these are vents. So I want you to think about the double acting cylinder we had a minute ago. If I supply air here, I shut everything off. I, put, I push this valve out, excuse me. I extend the cylinder, then I shut everything off. I've got air on both sides, right? So now I can't get the cylinder to go back. So if I wanted it to return, I don't have a spring to pull it back. I've actually got to vent one side and then give a little air to the other side. So in that case, most of the time I will vent my valve to get air out of the system or out of the line. So I remove the energy from the system. Now I want you to think about this. If I have a very long conveyor system, quarter mile long, I'm making, I'm making uh, irons or I'm making blenders or something on it. And I got, 75, 100 valves that are all going on and off at the same time and I'm venting air to the atmosphere, what's that gonna sound like? It's gonna be loud as hell, right? So what do I do? I put some filters or I put some vents on it and I actually put some mufflers on there. So this is designed to let air out slowly and much more quietly. And that way I don't hear a bunch of psh, 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 psh. I hear very small versions of that. Much better for the ears. And there's a lot of different kind of valves and it's important to make sure you understand which ones are which and what they do. Where do I find all that? I find that on the manufacturer site or I pull the actual tech sheet or the manual for this, right? All right, so I've got control valves. Now, how do I plumb all of this? So this is just like plumbing water or anything else. It's also very similar uh, electrical, structural, mechanical, pneumatic, hydraulic. They're all the same, right? Load goes to ground. I've got piping or resistance. I've got flow through air or water, similar to current. All of them the same. You can kind of think about them similarly. So in this case, I've got a plumb and I got to get air from one place to the other. In these cases, I got a lot of small hoses. And one really neat feature, if you notice the end of the valve here, when I plug this guy in, and hopefully I've got an actual straight cut on here. Hopefully my tech didn't hook me up. If I push that in, notice it won't just pull out. That's good, right? Because as soon as I get air pressure in there, it'll shoot out and hit me in the eye, right? And you notice I don't have my safety glasses on right now because we don't have any air and we don't have any power. Probably be good for me to go ahead and put them on, but I don't know where the heck they are and I don't want to look around the lab. I think I left them in the car. Uh, anyway, so I've got a connection here and I can't pull it out. So how do I get this out of here? This little piece actually pushes in and I can pull it out. So it's like a little safety. See how it clicks in and out? So I'm in, in bad lighting and I'm out. All right, so there you go. We got control, we've got supply. We're gonna plumb to this. We're gonna figure out which we want it to do if we turn it on. Then we're gonna use some kind of 
actuator cylinder to do something. So we're going to plumb back and forth for it. Uh, in some cases, if I need to block a port, I may have to rig something up for a block. So let's say I had a port that I wanted to be blocked for some reason or the other. I might put this into that side of it and then my air can't go anywhere and I block the port. You'll have to look and see why you might want to do that or not. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Hoses, connectors, a lot of different connectors. I got T's, I got elbows, I got all kinds of different things I can use. And then I have some other cool things like valves. What do you think this little guy does? Let's look at him. And let's see. I want to say I saw another one in here somewhere. Yep, here we go. What about this guy? What do you think I do with these in my incredibly bad lighting video that I got going on? There we go. Lighting is coming in now. So what do I do with this guy? What kind of valve is it? Screws on, screws down, and tight and stops. So what kind of valve is that? Well, that's probably some kind of needle valve. So when I unscrew this, it unseats a little cone cylinder that comes out of the hole allowing air to pass. So what can I do with this? I could control the flow through the line, right? So where might I put this? Let's think about one of our valve cylinders and I've got it set up where on the back side of this, I have supply out of one side and I extend my cylinder and then maybe I want it to come back slow or actually let's go to the reverse. I want it to extend slowly with a warning to tell people I'm about to smash your finger and then you know it's coming. So how do I get it to go slow when shop air is only at a certain thing? As soon as the shop air comes on, it's gonna flash out, right? What if I want it to come out really slow? Well, what I could do is on the back side of my valve, not on the front side of the cylinder, but on the back side, on the vent side, I can put a flow control valve and I can slow down the flow coming out. So on this side would be what's coming out, right? I supply here and instead of it shooting out, I control the flow out on this side through the backside vent of my valve and that way I can slow down the extension of this. Maybe I want to slow it down because I'm about to hit a limit switch or something that's very precious or I may want to try to slow it down for the timing or the warning or those kind of things. So I got flow control valves. There's other kinds of things. Let's see what else we got in here. What do you guys think that is? And very poor lighting. I want you to look up prox switches or proximity switches. Many of them are Hall effect. Many of them are to sense a piece of metal through the Hall effect in a certain location. And then I send out a signal. So let's say for instance, I'm extending the cylinder. I'm extending a guard or I'm extending a clamp to hold something down for someone and I want to know when this is here or when the gate is there, I might put a proc switch of some kind. And so my electrical circuit will go, okay, hey, the button was hit, I need to extend my cylinder. Well, I need to know when that cylinder or that gate closes. So oop, here's my proc switch, bang, I get an electrical signal, I know to stop supply and hold it right there. Does that make sense? Here's a nice example of a what do you think it is? The switch, right? Is it open or is it closed? Shows it right here on the switch. Could be open or it could be closed, right? It depends on how I wire it up. This side's normally closed and this side's normally open, right? So when I hit the switch, what will I do? I'll switch the connection from one to the other. So if I wire this up properly and I have a cylinder coming out, I might know that my gate or my guard or whatever it is that's protecting my person, as I cruise out over here, I'll come across this switch and here a click. So I get the click and then I know it in there. Now I might use that for, let's think about it. I think in your circuit that you've got a design at the end, you have to have a cylinder come out and hit a switch of some kind. So it might say, hey, the guard is down and then I extend another cylinder and I maybe hold the piece 
And then as soon as that cylinder is completely out, then I chop the crap out of it, right? So again, I want you thinking the entire time, what could I do with this in the real world? Could I put a bottle cap on? Could I insert a, a piece into another piece? Could I make a piece of equipment? Could I make an appliance? All well, that makes sense? All right, so let's see, we talked about plugs, talked about limit switches, and here's what I want you to do. So for this week's lab, since we can't be in here figuring all this stuff out, I want you to go on the manufacturer's websites, Festo, Bimba, Parker Hannifin, Siemens. I want you to go on Granger and McMaster Car, and I want you to look up cylinders and see if you can find some other manufacturers. Then I want you to figure out and go on their sites. And uh, actually another good spot is the bottom of the Wikipedia pages for these. There'll probably be references to various manufacturers or maybe simulators. And that's what I want you to look for, is I want you to draw up your pneumatic circuit. And maybe you just draw an initial one that's really simple. Um, if I had air in here today, I was gonna show you a couple of simple circuits where a cylinder might come out and hit a switch and stop. Okay, well let's draw that up and let's sketch that up. You'll have a pneumatic circuit and you'll have an electrical circuit. And in a minute I'm gonna do a video and talk about the electrical side of this, but right now we're just staying on pneumatics. So I want you to draw up your pneumatic circuit to do something. And then remember your very final lab, you're gonna have a circuit or a, a pneumatic setup that has to do a bunch of different things. Has to hit a switch and then extend another one and all those kind of things. So I want you to go on vendor websites. I want you to see what's available, see what's out there, learn the buzzwords, learn the names so that you can talk intelligently in an interview or for a chance to get an intern or a co-op job. And then I want you to see if you can find some online simulators for pneumatic circuits. Can you find something where you can drag and drop cylinders and valves and various parts and get it to do something? That'd be incredibly awesome if you can. I need you to put that in the Discord and I need you to let me know so that we can get those out to people. I'm kind of letting you guys crowdsource it. I was going to have some of my guys dig around and see what we can find and maybe even hit up the local motion guy and see what he had for us. But I think you guys crowdsourcing it might be better for you. That way you get some experience, just like an engineer, figuring out what the heck to do. Going out and seeing what's available and seeing what you got and seeing what you can find. So you're going to uh, go to vendor websites and find an online simulator. You're going to draw up your pneumatic circuits. And then I want you to make a... Do what we talked about, make a guard that then, as soon as it's there, another cylinder clamps a piece. And as soon as that's there, another cylinder picks it up, smashes it, kicks it, cuts it in half, those kind of things. That make sense? You always wanna do your guard first because you wanna keep people safe. That's the most important thing we do as engineers. We gotta keep people safe. We don't want fingers chopped off. We don't want any of those kind of things to happen. So I want you to think about what valve, what cylinder, and how you would control it on the pneumatic side. So there's your homework. I uh, hope you enjoyed this fantastic video with terrible lighting and probably bad audio. I uh, hope you guys are having a good time and I hope this lasts many years in the future. If you like this, let me know. Uh, if you didn't like it and you got some ideas for how it can improve, Please let me know that too. All right.